Contract in Farm 5, we follow Murphy Brothers agricultural contractors of Port Law and County Waterford. This family run business is one of the longest established agricultural contractor and plant hire experts in the southeast and is also home to their newly opened agri supply store. Established in 1975 by brothers John and Walter Murphy, the company is now headed up by John and his wife Catherine, along with the third generation, daughter Elaine and sons Walter Jr. and James. The business specialises in all aspects of farm contracting and has built up a large and loyal customer base, mainly encompassing parts of Waterford, South Tipperary and South Kilkenny. Among the services offered by Murphy's are silage and maize harvesting, slurry spreading, ploughing, sowing, excavation and land drainage, and we'll see it all in this DVD. First we cut up with Murphy's New Holland T7270 Auto Command, ploughing for potatoes outside Waterford City, with a 7 furrow over on the same amount of plough. We have a chat with local New Holland tractor dealer, Dick Murphy, and he gives us some background to the size of tractors they sell and some of the features on them. 
Uh, we've been selling New Holland Ford product for the last 60 years as well. And mm -hmm. our main tractors that we sell, T5s, T6s, around the 100 horsepower tractor, maybe 120 horsepower tractor. Well, we also sell the, sm the smaller ones as well. But generally, like the ones that maybe Murphy's in Port Law would be buying would be the, the bigger end of tractors and there would be kind of also higher specification tractors as well. But for heavy draft application like ploughing, and they generally use a 7 for a plough when they're ploughing with that one semi-mounted. This tractor has a really good integrated HTS, a headland turning system on it. What happens is you record the Sequence. You, you, record, you record a sequence on the tractor mm -hmm. and then you play it back at each headland. The tractor seat swivel is a little to the right so when you're looking out at your plowing or whatever it's less fatigued when you're turning around and the controls fall, fall to hand on that as well and turning, doing the headland shunt is made very easy with the HTS so it is. With the drilling season in full flight, Murphy's operate a 4 meter Lambkin solitaire drill behind a 280 horsepower Fent 828 with a 4 meter Heva front mounted packer roller. Murphy's bought the Lambkin to utilise the power in the Fent 828 and Walter said it makes a big difference on hilly ground and helps get the work done faster. <laughs> Murphy's are constantly investing in new equipment to provide a good service to their customers, and it is evident with the latest machines to arrive, including two new fan tractors, an A28 and a 724, a new model JCB 435 loader, an Itachi Axis 130 digger, a 3 ton mini digger, two additional Pottinger silage wagons, and a state of the art bog ball fertilizer spec.
Hercules run a Jocelyn tanker with an injector system and over him plows. So we talk to Jonathan Leach from Kelly's of Boris and he gives us his perspective on the equipment. Hi, my name is Jonathan Leach. I'm one of the salesmen here in Kelly's, in the Kelly's group. We have three branches, Kelly's of Boris, Kelly's of Leach and Kelly's of Kilkenny. In total, we have seven salesmen across the three branches. Well, there's plenty of good slurry tankers in Ireland, to be fair, but uh, the Joskin, the quality in the Joskin machines is probably second to none. Mm -hmm. The quality of steel, they actually use their own steel, you know, from Belgium, generally in, in the tanks. It's all fully galvanised, dipped inside and out. And yeah. if you look at the strength internally in those tanks, they'll just last forever once they're galvanised. Right, OK. The quality is there, you know. So Jonathan, um, Murphy's run the um, Overham ploughs, they've got a 5 yeah. for and 7 for a plough. Would there be a popular plough for sales here now with you? Yeah, we sell a few every year now in fairness, yeah. And what we find is the people that have gone to Overham ploughs, they don't go away in a hurry. Yeah. They, they like the ploughs, they find them very good for wear. Um, compared to some of the competitive ploughs, they, they do really find that they're getting more wear out of their tips and they're getting more wear out of their metal. That's right. what John Murphy will tell you anyway, he reckons they're cheaper to run and that's why he has them. Yeah, well, the hydraulic reset system on the on the over mm. compared to say the, the spring release system on the Cavernland ploughs, mm. the beauty of the hydraulic one is you can set the pressure. You see, it's very right. easy to adjust the pressure. So if you're going into a stony field, you can adapt the pressure so your boards can can spring out easier. Right. And also when they go up in the air, they come back down slowly like a shock absorber. They don't mm. go up and come down with a bang and then break something. Yeah. Okay. So they do suit tough conditions. As we move on to tilling for potatoes, Murphy's use integrated New Holland GPS to till the fields. Jonathan briefly talks to us about the horse machines they use. Yeah, they would have bought one of the first three metre tornadoes that we sold here. They use it for ripping up spud ground and, and for certain amount of min till I suppose and ripping plough ground. But the tornado to this day is still actually the best selling product that horse sell. It's a three rows of legs uh, mm -hmm. cultivator. Um, horse is such a huge product for us here in Kelly's now. Mm -hmm. uh, about 10 years ago you'd hardly ever have heard of a, a horse drill. Right. And now today we're the best selling trail drill in the country. Murphy's use a FET 936 with the Mashio bed tiller when bed forming for potatoes. They use the Topcon RTK base station to provide precision agriculture to get up to 2cm accuracy and it gives perfect straight lines every time. It assists with fuel usage and gets the job done faster and helps the harvesting become more efficient. The Grimmy CS150 destoner comes in after the bed tiller, so we get some technical information from Cecil in Grimmy, Ireland. I'm Cecil Morgan, 
uh, branch manager in sales of Grimmy Ireland Equipment Limited. The Grimmy CS150 model you see here is what we call an adjustable star machine. It has seven rows of stars which you can adjust according to the conditions of stone in your field. It also has a 40 mil web, hydraulic scrubber web to put increased output, left and right hand leveling automatic with a rake type bowler box. This is the most popular selling machine in Ireland at the moment. There is also other configurations of machines that you can buy to suit different areas within the country. The frame is made shorter and uh, you can have more maneuverability on the headlands. You can have it on a drawbar system or you can have it on the link arm systems. The link arm systems actually make it more maneuverable where you can turn quickly on the headland and come straight back into your ribs road. All stars and pulleys are driven with belts. There is only one chain on the machine which drives the front rotor power. The rotor power is usually with five finger tungsten tip for high life. The hydraulic scrubber web helps to clear and refine sods, clods quickly through the main sieving web. The potato planting comes next, with Cecil talking about the Grimmy planter and how the potato industry is doing in the current climate. The potato planter you see here, they're using the GB215. The GB215 was specially designed for chihit seed. The buds on the potatoes, uh, people do not want to knock the buds off because that can knock the potato seed back by two to three weeks. So to germinate it quicker. The current model they're using is uh, a GB215 with automatic leveling on the planting elements. So if you're on slopes, the planting elements will level out and always keep the feed of the potatoes going to the coulter uh, at a level to avoid unnecessary spacing issues. The second thing they have on this planter is a hood. This hood gives the form of a kid cat shape. This in order keeps the seed up well off the ground in case for wet conditions. Customers in Ireland prefer this hood because to the wet conditions we have with harvesting this helps the crop to grow better and not be saturated with water. The GB215 has high output. Uh, it can range from 7 to 9k uh, speeds while a conventional cup planter will only arrange to about 4k so you have higher output more productivity during the day uh, with the GB215 it was designed especially so the buds will not be lost off the potatoes well we've been dealing with Murphy's since about personally myself since about the year 2000 and Murphy's are a very professional outfit uh, they expect the service and demand the service, but they also purchase a premium product. But there's two reasons they purchase the premium product. One of their decisions is the package that goes with the product. They like to have the service, the backup as service, and the parts service. No grower uh, can afford downtime in such a country that has such variable weather. Mm -hmm. We could get a planting season uh, that could last for over three months, because of weather factors. So the customer needs to be 
move it when the weather's right. And with our product to that, and with our backup, we make sure that we have our customer moving. Our potato industry in Ireland has changed drastically, and the fresh market seems to be dropping away all surveys, while it's the processed market that's grown within the, co within the country and within Europe in general. Uh, people go for chips, prepared, uh, half-ready meals, the whole lot. The modern-day housewife and the modern-day family, they're only allowing 20 minutes for a prepared meal during the day. Their lives are so busy, they're both working. So what the potato industry needs to grow is food ready and and within 20 minutes. And as we finish up planting potatoes, we will see the harvesting later on. With fertilizer spreading becoming a more popular service that Murphy's provide, we talked to Trevor from Atkins Farm Machinery about the type of system that Murphy's use. Tell me, Trevor, what attracted Murphy's to bog ball in the first place? Um, I suppose Murphy's, like Murphy's were running a very professional company and were looking for a product that was basically able to provide a professional service and it was able to be connected to GPS. They were looking for weight cells and electronic control, but some of the features that we had on the machine was quite appealing to Murphy's in the fact that they could uh, record field data and remotely send it by email from the cab of the tractor without having to download data. So that particular feature was a, a bit of an advantage that they, they could add to their service. Yeah, it's um, it's a kit that fits to the Brogball machines. Uh, it's an in-cab wireless modem that connects to the computer in the cab and it creates a hotspot inside the cab which any Android tablet or phone can be connected to. And it's a free app that comes on that you can download on the tablet which allows the tablet to connect to the spreader and functions like automatic stop start, uh, section control and variable rate application and general features of most electronic machines would have would be displayed on the tablet. That can then be saved as a PDF file and emailed on an email to a number of email addresses from the field. So the farmer or the office administrator can use that to send invoicing to the farmers or whatever the case Exactly, like if the machine goes out to three customers in the one day with the system that Murphy's are using they can bring three different lots of fertilizer in one go for three different customers and by the time they leave the first farm the office has the details of what that job entailed before he goes to the next job okay. so, and then you know the farmer can be invoiced with a map of the field uh, it can show the length of time spent in the field it can show the application rate per hectare target versus actual so it mm -hmm. shows if the machine is achieving the correct rate okay and it shows the map of the, the directions the machine worked in the field so the farmer has all the information there to you know to see what was actually done and what he's paying for Can you tell me trevor um why why murphy's chose the um the mounted option over a trail spreader well like in bulk spreading there's a number of options you know mounted trails trolleys you know various options but uh, for what murphy's were looking to achieve it was going to make them more versatile than a lot of other systems. Um, with bulk spreading, you're kind of aiming to have the bulk spreader full as much times as you can with eight or ten tons. But when later on in the year, if a smaller customer wants only four ton or three ton, you're, it's, it's inefficient to, uh, mm -hmm. to to provide that service. Whereas the system Murphy's decided to use would allow them to, you know, keep maybe three or four customers happy in a shorter space of time, but also be efficient in bringing out a four ton drop to one customer a six ton drop to another customer mm -hmm. so the, the system they chose allows them to be more, be more versatile and go to like I said dairy farmers they can handle paddocks on one load smaller areas and then they can also you know do the silage ground and the tillage ground the system and the machine that Murphy's have uh, comprises of an in-cab computer which most electronic machines will come with anyway mm -hmm. but in some states you can connect it in aftermarket GPS like Patchwork or Trimble or Topcon or whatever make to mm -hmm. your spreader the systems that Murphy's are using is a tablet control which is a wireless system so in the cab you will have the, the tractors or the spreader's own computer mm -hmm. also their own tablet so the operator will set the machine like headland settings or infield settings through the tractor's own or the spreader's own computer mm -hmm. but also the information that's on that computer is, is wirelessly transferred to the tablet mm -hmm. so he can either use the, the computer for the spreader to change it or he can change it on the tablet okay. so it's up to the operator which way he wants to if he wants to work it off the own the spreader's own computer or the tablet system he can activate the same settings on both but 
he would have to switch on and off the activation of his section control via the tablet. That's the only thing the tablet has to be has to be used for. The rest can be done on either one. There's typically if you go from a, a fertilizer spreader with no electronics on it up to electronics, mm -hmm. there's anywhere between three and six percent of a of, an, of a saving in cost of fertilizer usage. And then if you go to weight cells on on a fertilizer spreader, then you're looking up to seven and eight percent of a saving in fertilizer usage. So if a guy is doing a hundred tons a year and you know he's always you know setting his machine based on a, a spread chart or something like that and doing the best he can for his driving in the field and his setting of the machine he still won't be as accurate as a weight cell can be because it's continuously on the move calibration a lot of people uh, when they think about weight cells on a fertilizer spreader you know they think that the machine is telling you what's in the hopper but weight cells are a little bit more advanced than that um, there's a quite a unique system on the Bogball machine which allows, it's, it's an on the move weighing system which calibrates the output or the flow through the hopper mm -hmm. at uh, 23 times per second which it gives a discrepancy of uh, plus or minus 1% of an accuracy which allows say for example if the operator is spreading urea and it happens to start raining through the load the humidity outside can upset the flow of fertilizer, which is common enough on, on, you know, in all types of fertilizers, but urea more so. Mm -hmm. The machine can adjust to the difference in flow before the operator would ever even notice. So it, it gives a, a much, more higher, much higher level of accuracy that if the operator types into the computer that the farmer wants 200 kilos per hectare, well, with the auto steering and everything on the tractor and the auto stop start and the section control, it's 200 kgs per hectare is what he gets. As we move on to silage, we start off looking at Murphy's forage harvester team. So Jonathan, um, Murphy's run a 13-year-old um, class Jaguar 900. It, it seems yeah. it's 13 years old and it just seems bulletproof. It's, it's some machine. Yeah, the older 900 series and 800 series Jaguars were really fantastic machines. They just seem to keep on running and running. We have plenty of machines here with five and six thousand hours and they're still going very well. Once they're serviced and maintained well, Mm -hmm. And in fairness to Murphy's, they would be very, very good at preventative maintenance during the winter and they work closely with our lads here in the garage. So if they're maintained right, those machines will run and run, yes. I just thought like when I was saw them um, working on the harvester there, it, it seemed to be up against a, as good a, as an 870 or 950. Was... Yeah, well, I suppose the, the equivalent of a 900 nowadays in the new models would be an 870. So. Yeah. Yeah, even the older machines, when they're good, when the blades are good, the shear bar is good, and everything is set properly with a good operator, they can still put in huge performance. And then, I suppose, Murphy's run, um, I suppose I would consider it an unusual um, setup with a fully reverse drive um, yeah. and more, like, you know, yeah. why is that they're, more po they're less popular than the start, like the front and rear combination mowers? Well, Murphy's are running a system like that for a good few years. I think that's the second mower like that. And we have another customer in the southeast that's running the same reverse drive mowers like mm -hmm. that. The advantage for, is from the operator's point of view, they have a better view, they have better visibility. And what they find as well is when they're mowing around corners, uh, they, they don't have to worry about the overlap between the machines as much. If you have a front and rear combination, if you're turning tight on a corner, no matter what way you have it set up, you can only turn so tight or you leave a, a strip behind. Whereas with the, the triple mowers, that's not an issue. Right. Well, with the triple on the front, that's not an issue, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The reverse drive mowers that Murphy's bought off us, they have active float system on them, which is new on the class mowers in the last few years. So we're using a hydraulic pressure system to, rather than springs to tension the bed on the ground. So it means you can adjust that on the move and you can mow faster and mow, mow tighter and mow faster. As well as that, their machine, they have it fully set up on isobus on their fent tractor. So all their functions are worked from the joystick and we can do the same now on the class tractors. Mm -hmm. So the, from an operator's point of view, he just press one button to lift the right more, he can press one button to lift the left more, or he can lift them all three together. So right. it's a lovely machine. Having, having the three mowers together definitely makes it easier for the operator, and he's looking straight down on them, and you're up to output levels, getting close to that of a big game, you know? Mm. And class often run those triple mowers on their Zerian tractors in the UK, and mm. then you really are into a self-propelled mower outfit, really.
to me, Jonathan, I suppose the JCB 416 is, would be the normal bread and butter model for most contractors in the country, but Murphy's running the, yeah. the, the 2435s. Is there a reason for that? Is, is it due to the weight differential? I'd, I'd say, to be fair, with Murphy's now, they are doing a little bit of wagon sided, and with the longer chop, it definitely does help to have more weight to compact the sidage better. It's that mm. a bit harder compacted. So that's why people are moving towards the heavier loaders with that. And also, when you start trying to keep sidage away from like some of the 970s and things we're working out there now, you know, you need a big loader. You yeah. need a big loader to get away. Plenty of power, plenty yeah. of weight. Yeah, like the 414s and 416s, which were the bread and butter loader here for years and years, they were probably about 9 ton weight. Whereas the loader in Murphy's, that 435, is somewhere in around 14, I think. You know, so it's a yeah. big difference. The torque lock transmission in the JCBs, though, to be fair, even with all that weight, they're still a brilliant thing to climb. Mm. With the to just to explain the torque lock transmission that you work by bypassing the torque in the transmission once she starts moving. So you're basically like a tractor pushing. Rather than mm. all it losing rather than losing thirty or forty percent of your power to a torque converter, mm. it bypasses the torque once you're once you're rolling. So once the ACB brought out that transmission it really revolutionized the loading troubles. So tell me, Jonathan, um, what's your opinion on the forager versus wagon silage debate? It's, uh, look, horses for horses, really, John, you know. There's definitely a place in this country for the wagons, smaller yeah. scale. You know, a fella's not doing a huge amount of silage and they're maybe moving away from bales back towards pit. Yeah. The yards are awkward. 
maybe don't suit you know the hundred acres a day of a, of a self propelled harvester. Mm. There is a place for them, but on a larger scale, like we've seen, some of our larger contractor customers have gone that way completely. Maybe got rid of the harvester year one, gone in with two or three wagons, and then they've gone back after a year or two back to the harvester. You know. Right. Um, I'll put it this way to you: if rain is coming and you have two hundred acres of grass on the ground. I'd rather have a jag in the field now than two or three wagons. Yeah, I think That'd everyone be, would. Yeah. <laughs> so, look, there is a place from, definitely a place from. It's an efficient way of bringing in grass in some situations, but it's not for everyone, it's not for every place, you know. It's very weather dependent in yeah. one sense, too. We do have some customers now running, you know, bigger operators running maybe a harvester and maybe one wagon. Mm. And if, if they're under pressure and customers are screaming, they can send on the wagon to to get things started, you know, or, or mm. maybe do some of the smaller jobs. That, you know, they'll work well that way together, of they course, will. Of Now we move on to some riverside land drainage. Here we see a not so typical job where a winter storm had flooded a field when the Shore River burst its banks. With only a short time window to get the job done before the tide comes in, Murphy's had to organise as many excavators to get the job done as fast as possible. 
As the tide went out, they brought in timber piles and then they had to move as much soil as possible to fill the gap as they all worked together for four hours to get the riverbank built up again. Now we go back to silage with forage wagons. Yeah, hi, I'm James Coleman, Shoreway Farm Machinery. Uh, we've been in business in Carrick on Shore for almost 30 years now, uh, initially with the forklift business, and uh, we diversified some years ago to the agri trade. Obviously, when the downturn came, the economy, we needed to get sustainability for the company and sustainability for the jobs, really. So um, the obvious choice uh, as a bolt-on to our forklift business was farm machinery. Yeah, obviously we cover the full range of uh, equipment with Pottinger from your normal standard top or more all the ways up to your tethers, your rakes and obviously the, the ultimate unit they make being the Pottinger forage wagon. We've got a huge range um, within that, that uh, line from the Faro to the Euro Profi to the Toro to the Jumbo and uh, the products ever evolving obviously. Um, we have reduced the number of options within size in wagons just to cater for the market more. Um, very suitable to Irish conditions and you know the grass we grow in Ireland really. I mean the, wag the wagon business has evolved greatly over the last three to four years in particular. I mean the wagon has always been on the market and has always been used by, by uh, the very uh, conscientious and cute operators who, who, um, know what the, who knew what the wagon was about. In saying that um, it's grown greatly in the sense that the average wagon for the average contractor for many years was the Toro 5100. But like all things, everything's got bigger and bigger and a lot of the contractors now evolved into the, the jumbo, the 6610, the 6010, 6610. Um, that size because they want to get more volume into the field in one load. It's obviously more um, realistic from their point of view from a cost factor. Yeah, I mean, funny thing, John, is, is that um, this would have been one of our weakest areas for Pottinger wagons in particular, for forage wagons. And um, two, I think it was three years ago at, at the, the Plown Championships, uh, I met with John Murphy. John Murphy is a long-standing customer of ours, and Murphy Brothers are a long-standing customer of ours in the forklift business, believe it or not. Um, 20, 30 years ago when I sold my first forklift, um, when I traded it back in, would you believe it's, it's ironic really that Murphy's, it was John Murphy bought that machine from me, so mm -hmm. he actually has the first forklift I ever sold. But we led on then obviously to the agribusiness. We hadn't really done much business with, with Murphy Brothers and I uh, met him at the plow match as I said and uh, I said to him, John, I said, would you ever consider um, wagons for your business and it was absolute no from him at that point. Mm -hmm. So we sat down, had a cup of tea and discussed it for quite a while and uh, I said, John, I said, 
tell me one other product in the world where you can deliver a better quality product at a cheaper price to the end user and you'll make more money than you're doing today. Something contractors always want to hear. Absolutely. Uh, and that's what it's about, delivering, delivering better quality at a better price. And in fairness, he said, no, you couldn't. And, you know, we talked and laughed and joked for a while and everything went on. I said, John, look, I said, a Pottinger forage wagon really is like a haircut, I said. You eventually have to get one. So I said, it's a matter of deciding when. So I went on and looked, John is John, and Walter was there, and, and, and James, and we had a good crack and good fun. And, you know, funny, he went off walking around the plough match, as most people do, and, you know, he must have thought about it and looked at the wagons, and he came back to me about an hour later, and he said, look, will you come down to me in two weeks' time and talk to me? So one night, went down and met him, I think, at 10 o'clock, one night. And uh, would you believe it, I think we left the house that night at 12 or half 12 with an order for two wagons. And that mm. was the first of it. And uh, obviously, it's been a major success for John since, and the Murphy brothers, and Walter, and James, and they've led on and bought two more wagons since, and two more since, and a rake. So it's a, it's a great success story. And uh, from our perspective, obviously, we're delighted to see John and Walter operating our product in the field. They are a very professional organization. and. Um, they don't generally get it wrong, in fairness to them. So it was a, a key customer from our perspective in the area, with some great customers obviously in the area, contractors and farmers, but uh, it was very important um, from our point of view to get John into wagons and then Walter, yeah. One of the key things we get actually, one of the key inquiries we get, in particular when somebody's converting from a, from a harvester to a wagon, mm -hmm. or considering a wagon for the first time is, is maintenance costs. And I mean the maintenance cost on a forage wagon, Pottinger anyway in particular I can tell you, is so minimal, mm -hmm. it's actually hard to believe. I couldn't quantify it one day until a, a customer who's using two wagons came in and there was a customer here considering buying one and I asked him the question and he's, his answer was you will not spend 5,000 over five years. No, so, that, a wagon. So, so if you take it at 1,000 a year, that's mm. the maximum you figured you were going to spend and that includes breaking some knives because of stones and this and that but mm -hmm. the maintenance is so minimal on right. forage wagons in comparison to harvesters. That's okay. the key and hence you can deliver a better service, cheaper to the end user and obviously give the better product.
We now talk to Sean Fitzgerald, a newly appointed salesperson with Shoreway, about the wagons and the latest Pottinger machinery that Murphy's have purchased. Well, the wagons um, Murphy's run are the new Jumbo 6610s, very high spec machines, 710 tyres, steering axle, four steering, uh, auto cut, which is very new in, on the Irish market from Pottinger. Uh, that wagon is possibly carry, on average, maybe 20 tonne of reasonably dry grass. Mm -hmm. um, they're driven with 250 horsepower tractors uh, with an output of up to 70 acres a day per wagon. The latest two that they bought was a 6610. Before that, they had a 6010. Um, the reason they went to the bigger model is because Pottinger stopped producing the smaller one mm -hmm. and they went to the bigger one. Um, but they've also put auto cut on the newer wagons and went for four steering. I suppose it's a new thing that people are, are looking at now. It, it replaces the manufacturer's control panel and the machines plug into the tractor's computer mm -hmm. and all the controls are done from the computer and the tractor. Um, not all tractors are compatible with, with Isobus and, and not all manufacturers have machines but luckily enough Pottinger are very much up to date with all their machinery. Mm -hmm. So all our mowers, all our wagons are all Isobus compatible really. Okay, great. Yeah. And it's changing and even down the road it's going to come to where you can download an app to work the machine on the back of your tractor. Or, so you have your standard iPad in your tractor and that's working your, your machine behind the tractor. That's where the future is leading. John luckily has bought into the whole concept of Pottinger. He realises the quality of the product. Um, in the mowing now they run the Alpha Motion. The Alpha Motion is market leader in, across Europe because of its flotation system. Mm -hmm. It's a patent flotation system. Uh, the mower actually floats up and down directly, not forward and backwards. Uh, it is most flotation travel than any mower on the market. Um, that's on the front of the tractor. On the rear of the tractor then you have a 302 ED, which is 10 foot mower conditioner. Uh, again, there's some nice flotation benefits to that machine. There's a hydraulic lower linkage to keep the mower level on the back of the tractor. Um, and they all come standard with a heavy duty passenger bed, renowned for its quality. More than John operates our, our 762 rake, uh, it'll put three 10 foot swats together. Uh, it's hydraulic telescopic settings. Um, we run in front of the rake, we, again we have a unique feature of a wheel called a multitask wheel, which mm -hmm. keeps the tines from the ground and prevents contamination again. So the quality is there with the Pottinger product. The cost of ownership of a, co of a Pottinger product is probably lower than any other product on the market and that's something that contractors are looking at today when they're making a purchase. As the harvest comes in, we catch up with the water harvesting spring barley outside Carrick and Shore with their class Lexian 620. Kelly's and Boris supply Murphy's with the class Lexian. We talked to Jonathan about the Lexian range. Okay, Jonathan, you sell yeah. quite a few combines as well. Like, you know, can you give us the breakdown of the sizes of the combines you would normally sell? That has changed in recent years. It's actually gone from uh, selling bigger combines to selling more mid-range walker machines. Hmm. We've, we've actually shifted now from selling a huge amount of rotary machines to selling more six walker machines. A breakdown really there in the last few years would be if we sold 10 combines, 
there was probably five or six Lexian 650s, 660s, 670s, which are six walker machines. There was probably three, maybe, you know, three, I suppose, uh, five walker machines, being Lexians or Tucano models, and maybe one or two with larger rotary machines. One of the biggest factors has been the output has been increasing and increasing on the walker machines. Right. So we're now in a situation where 670 Lexian um, probably has the output very close to a 570 rotary had a few years ago. Okay. So we can get the higher output with the, with the walker machine while still maintaining strong quality. And, and it's just a, it's an easier machine to resell also. Our problem is when the machine comes back in second hand, the larger rotary is hard enough sell because the, the second hand customer wants a walker machine. Right. So people are finding that it's better to buy the walker. We have actually one particular customer this year, he was going to buy one large rotary combine and instead he actually bought two six walker machines. Okay Dawson, can you give me a bit of the background to the class 620 Lexington combine that Murphy's on? Well, 620, 630 are both five walker combines in the Lexian range, they're the smallest of the Lexians. They're becoming more and more popular in this country and the main reason why our class combines do perform so well in our Irish conditions over here mm -hmm. is that we run what we call an APS drum. So in your class combine you actually have three drums in the front, three, mm -hmm. three concaves, three drums. The first one is the APS drum, which is running at 50% of the speed of the main drum. Mm -hmm. So when the crop comes up the neck, it's going from standstill to 50% speed in the first smaller drum, mm -hmm. and then it goes into the big drum at full speed. Right. And those two drums are actually linked together. So if you decrease the speed of the big one, it also decreases the small one. What that means is it improves crop flow. Classes mm -hmm. speak a lot about crop flow, and it is very important. Driving other makes and machines in damp conditions, we're all familiar with hearing grunting and groaning underneath our feet as the crop goes into the concave. Mm -hmm. On a class, it's very rare and has to get very, very wet before you'll hear that. Yeah. The, the crop is increasing steadily in speed going through the machine. We also trash 30% of the grain in that first APS drum, and then the remaining 70% is trashed by the big drum. Again, we talked to Jonathan as Kelly supply Murphy's with the JCB loaders. Jonathan, um, Murphy's run two JCB 435 models. One is the 2015 yeah. model and one is the all new 2016 model. Can you give me a rundown as to, like, you know, just the difference between the two models? Or? Well, the biggest difference really is in the cab and the operator environment. I think in the new one is, has improved drastically, you know, yeah. over the previous one. Um, Performance wise, they're both fantastic machines. Those four three fives now, there's just nothing can come near them on a the pit. There's, there's a lot of makes of loaders out there, but at the end of the day, the JCB is designed for clamp work, right. whereas most of the others are industrial machines. General, yeah, the mm. cab is a lot of it, but it's the same reason why the class tractors took off for us. Once the operator likes the cab, that's, yeah. that seems to be as important <laughs> nowadays as difference. anything else.
As the autumn comes in, Murphy's harvests maize for a select number of customers, and as you can see, the Jaguar 900 takes it all in its stride. This year's potato harvest kicked off in great conditions. Again, we talked to Cecil about the Grimmie GT170 Harvester. Well, the GT170 Harvester is a very uh, versatile harvester. And what I mean by versatile is that uh, it's a very renowned harvester for getting work done in dry conditions without damage and wet conditions without damage. Basically, the GT170S that you see in the video here is a hydraulic web driven machine and that has full control over the speed of the webs and controlling the flow of the potatoes up to the separator unit. Mm. Everything is controlled from the cab under the new modern multiseps. Mm. You can set the distances, you can set the height and you can set the speed of each multiseps. That's all on a multifunctional panel, a VC50 mm -hmm. in the front of the cab. It is also equipped like with Grimmy control cameras. You can have uh, cameras on the on the machine that, when the machine indicates a blocking, mm -hmm. comp uh, you get a, a, a the camera switches to the point of where the machine is under pressure. 
The Larrington trailers were designed to reduce damage of filling into boxes. Mm -hmm. Now, customers have various types, not just Larrington's, but trailers of this design. This is to reduce any damage or bruising on the potatoes filling into the boxes. Remember, the potatoes these people are growing are table potatoes, and these want the best skin finish, they want no bruising under the skin, and then 90% of the packers like their products to be filled into boxes and instead of going into a grader first the mm. boxes are put into the cold store and when the boxes are taken out when they're ready for grading that mm. they only run across the grader once to eliminate the product bruising damage and mechanical damage. Mm. This particular machine you see here has what we call terra control Terra control is the, to set the Diablos on top of the ridge with not too much pressure and to adjust accordingly so that you don't get to squeeze, to make sure you can maintain a good feed into the harvester but not too much pressure on the drills that you damage potatoes. I asked Cecil about how he feels about the potato industry moving forward. Farming, it'll get to a level. We have a market and we have to grow to that market. And we need to be, we need to box clever. We don't need to put in extra acres this year. Mm -hmm. Just because we may have had a good year last year. We need to put in the same acre, constant acres and pursue the same tonnage. Exactly. That we can get a solid price because the more potatoes we have, the less price it's going to be. Mm -hmm. and the other factor is, I know we can't control weather, but we can control the acres we do. And it'll be better all around for the industry. Potato harvesting completed, we call out to see Murphy's ploughing some potato ground with her Case 140 backed up by their Fen 724 while Walter drills the winter crops with the Fen 828 and Lemkin drill.
We come back to some digger work and see James working on a demonstration to Tachi's Axis 130 at some land reclamation. James looks after the plant hire side of the business and between himself and John arrange all the work to be done along with the digger fleet maintenance. Here we see Mark grading a site on another one of Murphy's 13 ton Hitachi excavators in Carrick and Shore. Murphy's do a large amount of dung spreading, so we catch up with Mick spreading some dung with his Fent 724 and 10-ton Richard Western spreader being loaded by their older JCB 435S. <laughs>
As winter closes in, one of Murphy's customers that grows carrots requires them to be covered in straw to protect them from the elements. Straw is to be brought in and then loaded onto a Jones Engineering straw layer. And while the process is happening, a layer of polythene is also being put under the straw so it can be easily removed in springtime. We have one last quick look at some of the land reclamation and receding that was done through the year and as we finish up the DVD we take a look at Murphy's new agri store at their premises in Mount Bolton, Portlaw.